Hello, I'm your host, Ron King of RKP Radio, and welcome to another edition of The Ron King Show. Today, we have in our studios Candy Baker Maley, lead singer and guitarist of the Christian band His Royal Blood. Candy, welcome to the program. Thanks so much, Ron. I'm really happy to be here. Hey, I tell you what, uh, John, our producer, we haven't had a uh, pretty girl like this in our studio uh, probably in the last couple of days, have we? <laughs> Just a couple days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> candy. Before you were Candy Baker Maley, you were just known as Candy Baker. I'm sure that over the years, a whole lot of people have had some fun with that name. There has been a lot of fun with that name. Can you remember, like, one particular... Did they ever uh, run with it and call you something else? Or? No, I think they might have been a little afraid of me. <laughs> So they didn't do that much, but uh, when I got into high school, there was a, a boy there, his last name was Kane, and they always said, oh, wouldn't that just be the funniest thing, Candy Kane? <laughs> I guess it would be the funniest that would, thing. That would even top Candy Baker. Yes, uh-huh. Well, Baker, that was your maiden name? It was, is, was yeah. It? Oh, okay. You uh, wonder what my mom was thinking when she named me Candy. Yeah, who can, <laughs> who, who can pin a name on you? Candy, I know you're based in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, but uh, are you originally from Mount Morris? Born and raised there. I moved away for 10 years to Hazleton, West Virginia, and then moved back. I've been back in Mount Morris about seven years now. Okay. Hazleton, West Virginia. Now, I know Mount Morris. It has a service station and a post office. I don't even think it has a bar, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a full-fledged town. Then, huh? <laughs> well, uh, it is dinky. You, uh, it is and when you moved small. to Hazleton, was it uh, larger than Mount Morris, PA? It was even smaller. How could that be? <laughs> <laughs> There's no, yeah. Well, actually, uh, it's near Brewston Mills, West Virginia. So they mm. have a store. They have a little, a small store and um, a truck stop. But Hazleton, eight miles away, uh -huh. nothing. It was mostly countryside, beautiful, beautiful countryside. I performed a concert one time many years ago down in Kingston. I think that's fairly close to Brewston Mills, is it not? That I yeah. do not yeah. know. Yeah, it, it, it is. Candy, <clears throat> about how old were you when you first became uh, interested in music? Uh, about 13 years old, back when Charlie McLean was big with Sentimental OU and mm -hmm. Who's Cheating Who. And okay. Who's Cheating Who? A drinking, cheating song. She had to be a country artist. She was a country artist. Okay. Uh, had you been playing anything besides the radio up to that point? Um, you know, when I was little, my Uncle Joe, he played guitar, and um, I loved Elvis. Uh -huh. And he would uh, let me just play with his guitar, and of course, you know, I stand there and do all Elvis's moves and <laughs> have a good time with that. So I was already hooked I'll before I was what. 13, but I didn't know how to play anything. Or... Yeah, Elvis, I tell you what, Johnny Carson said one time, and I still remember, he said, You know, folks, if there was any justice in the world, all the uh, Elvis impersonators would be dead and Elvis would still be alive. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> well, uh, did you always like uh, country music? Did you, uh, when you were like 13 years of age, did you listen to rock and roll on the radio? Well, you know, not really. It was mostly country at that time. And then by the time I got to high school, of course, you know, all the big 80s hair bands were big. And I listened to that, but I wasn't really interested in singing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, then after I toured later, uh, you're going to really get a kick out of this. Disco was my favorite. And I still love disco. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That is a total aberration. There I is, know. There is no way... <laughs> that a person can use the word love and disco in the same sentence does not compute. And you know, it, as it turns out, the guitar player John in, in the band loves disco too. Now, what are the chances of that? Yeah, what are the chances? <laughs> what, what are the chances of anybody loving disco? I, I mean, know. <laughs> okay, so you're at home and you're listening to Charlie McClain on the radio or wherever you're listening to her. And then the next thing you mentioned, you're out on the road. What, what happened in between? I mean, I think we jumped over a few years there. Uh, yeah, many years. Uh -huh. 
I, I just, uh, I thought, well, you know, I don't want to stand up and just sing. I, I enjoyed singing, and I was very, very backward, very shy, mm -hmm. and I just thought, well, you know, maybe I better play guitar. That would kind of, I could hide behind that a little bit. Really? Yeah, so I uh, got a chord book, and I put... Uh, I can't remember what song, but it was a Charlie McLean song on, uh -huh. and I just started trying to figure out the chords and go with the chord book and figure it all out on my own, and mm -hmm. and started like that, and then got a band together. Um, a boy that I went to school with, his parents had a band, and it was that way. It was a nice family thing, and mm -hmm. we played together, practiced, and, and well, you, played you, a few jobs. You say you went on the road. Uh, what? Where are some of the places you went? Um, we toured all over the United States from Alaska to Key West, and we played uh, casinos, lots of casinos in Vegas. Um, in Alaska, we were there for two and a half months, and just we played ten months out of the year. We were we were touring. When you were in Alaska, were you uh, there when like there's uh, no daylight? I was. Really? Yeah, and it's not like pitch black like you think. It it was it's like right. dusk all oh. the time. Oh, okay, okay. Any, but it was cold weather too. Any elk, <laughs> elk wa walking down the streets in some of the smaller towns? No, you know, the whole time I was there, I, I, my only goal was to see a moose, and I never did. I never, but I got to walk on top of an iceberg and... Oh, really? Yeah, it was. Okay. That's an amazing place. Alaska's awesome. So you're touring with this band, mm -hmm. and what, you're playing a, a country, and, and then later disco music? Uh, were you playing in, you said casinos, were you doing uh, like uh, uh, the Holiday Inn and that sort of thing too or, or not in the beginning you know we played uh <laughs> the, the the places you start out at the bottom if you don't have a knife when you go in they they give you one yeah <laughs> you and you work your way up from there and then you start playing the nice holiday ends and and uh, then we started playing the uh the line dance clubs like two football fields long that were mm -hmm. awesome places to play and you know you pretty much just walk in and play they have sound everything you just show up do your thing and pl pl plug have in fun and, uh, and, go. and do your thing and, and go so uh, how many years were you on the road doing that seven years you lived out of a suitcase for seven years I did we did um, we left on uh, let's see New Year's Eve was our first gig of the year uh -huh. and we would come back um, usually sometime in the middle of July we would leave the beginning of August, and then we would come back one week before Christmas. Okay, and stick around home for Christmas mm -hmm. that time, and, and then go out again. Yes. Candy, I know that <clears throat> somewhere along the line you made a Christian uh, commitment. Could you tell us a bit how and when that occurred? Well, over my lifetime I was raised in church, and um, uh, I backslid several times and this last time uh, the commitment was three years ago that I rededicated my life to Christ. Well I know about the backsliding a little bit. I went to see my father when he was still alive and I said hi dad how you doing and uh, how's my sister uh, doing and he says uh, well, she and her husband uh, are going down to uh, the uh, uh, church this evening. Uh, Jules, uh, he's going to get saved. And he thought for a second and said, hmm, seems to me he did that once before. Well, I guess it didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's easy to get to get out of it, you know, in this world. And uh -huh. and uh, I was in a very bad place this last time, you know. Uh, did done things I never ever thought I would do. Just and uh, I, it was, came to the point where I was so bad. And I I'm really a happy jolly person. I tend to find you know I tend to find the fun in just about anything. Sure. And uh, this uh, when I. Before I rededicated my life, I was on my way home from Fairmont, West Virginia, and uh, I just decided, you know, life's not worth living anymore, and uh, I just, I can't do this. I, I don't want to go on, and I thought, you know, the very next bridge embankment that comes up, I'm going to run my truck in that, and at that very moment, uh, my cousin, who I hadn't talked to in 
uh, probably three or four years, not because we were mad, just because our lives were in different places, mm. called me on the phone. And this is like one o'clock in the morning. What's she doing up at one o'clock in the morning? Come on, you know, she's a mom of three or four kids and she calls me and she said, hey, um, I just felt like I needed to pray for you. Do you wanna, would it be all right if I prayed for you? And oh. I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I didn't get saved right then, but but God used her to save my life. and Kept you from maybe doing something to yourself. Definitely, he did. Okay. Well, so eventually you became a Christian. Did you feel after you made your Christian commitment that you needed to start playing uh, Christian songs rather than... Uh, Beer drinking and cheating songs. <laughs> <laughs> and disco songs. And, and, and uh, oh yeah, those terrible, terrible, <laughs> sinful disco songs, too. <laughs> um, no, absolutely not. I was so burnt out from, from touring, and, and that's a really hard life. It, it, touring is a hard life. You're away from your family, your friends. Um, and no, I was so burnt out, I did not even touch the guitar for maybe two years. Um, even after I got saved and the Lord just kind of laid it on my heart one day, hey, this is, I, I want you to play. I had no idea where it was going to take me to, but he just laid it on my heart. I, I want you to start playing again. Mm -hmm. Well, it took you to the heights. You're here on the Ron King Show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, for the program, you related to me a particular incident that got you playing again. Would you tell us about that place? Yeah, there was a gentleman named Phil Long in our town, and he, for I'm not sure how many years, at, at least 20 years, he was relentless in tracking me down and asking me to play at the nursing home, the retirement homes with him, and I said, no way, I am not doing that. And uh, he, he just kept asking. He, he never cared. He's like, okay, all right. And uh, one day I get a phone call, and... Uh, it's Joyce, the, the secretary from our church, and she said, uh, Phil is, is dying in the hospital, and he said he's not going to be able to make it to the nursing home tonight. Evidently. <laughs> he would like for you to fill in for him. Well, how could I tell him no? I, I can't tell the dying man no. So I show up at the nursing home, and that's where I met Tim, our piano player. Okay, he was part of the group uh, of the, the dying he was, man. Yes, he was part of the ministering group there. Okay. And as soon as I heard him play, I just fell in love with his playing. And I said, man, we got we got to play together. Okay, and the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> okay, so you have this group, His Royal Blood. Who writes the songs for your group, Candy? Uh, Roger Lemley writes the songs for the group. He uh, is the acoustic guitar player. He does some singing. Uh, and he has a voice like... Um, uh, Johnny Cash, real deep, uh -huh. thick voice. One of his personality yes. voices. Uh -huh. yes. uh, how long has his royal blood been together? This is our second year. We've been together for two years. Okay. Uh, you have other members in the group, I know. I've seen you play live before uh, down at the Mount Morris uh, Church. Who are the uh, f folks in the group and what instruments do they play, Candy? Well, I, I told you about Tim. His last name is Tennant, and he plays piano. He mm -hmm. is actually the music director of the group. He's the one that tells me, uh, Candy, don't sing that part. You sound <laughs> awful. <laughs> well, you have to get and rid he's not afraid to do it either. You have to get rid of that guy. <laughs> we, we don't need any downers in the group. Everything I sing is just exquisite. How, how it's could, all how? That's what I tell him, Ron, but he just doesn't want to listen to me. <laughs> Uh, are you, are you, okay, who, who else is in the group? Uh, ben Hirschberger plays drums. Uh, he's from here in Washington, PA. Okay. And uh, we have, of course, Roger Lemley. He does the songwriting. He plays acoustic guitar and sings. Uh, John Adams is from Mount Morris, and he plays acoustic guitar and sings. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jay Morris from Mount Morris also plays bass guitar. Okay, a lot of Morris is down there in there Mount is, Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you are based out of what particular church, Candy? The Mount Morris Gospel Tabernacle. Okay. Or is the church supportive of the band? They are very supportive of the band. Yeah. And uh, the uh, the head pastor, John Jackson, he he is uh, kind of like a rock for us. He he guides us. He gives us guidance and and 
definitely is on the prayer warrior list for us. Does he keep you in check? And if you folks uh, started, uh, you know, drifting out to space, would he, uh, <laughs> would he mention it to you? Oh yes, he would. <laughs> he would pull me aside and say, "Now, can okay. you?" <laughs> so, would you say then that the group is accountable to this particular pastor? Uh, yeah, I would. I would say that. Okay. Okay. Candy, I understand your group just released your first CD. Isn't that awesome? I'm yeah. so excited about I that. I know. And before we started the program, our producer, John Bodwin, propped it up on our uh, desk here. And he's going to try to zoom in now and get a picture of that new CD. And make sure you get that, that girl in there, man. She's really good looking. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, I she's that, the best looking girl in the group. I thought that was the guy that drove the cab to the <laughs> <laughs> recording studio. That's the broom sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is your first CD, right? First one with this group, yes. With this group, and it's uh, it's called uh, Mountain. Where did you record this CD? It was recorded at uh, Zone 8 Studios in Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay, pretty nice studio? The... the uh, technician and the owner of the studio was absolutely amazing. He was such a great guy, Mark Poole, to work with. Really uh, had a lot of patience with us and uh, a lot of guidance, which, you know, when you go into a studio, I'm sure you know this, they, you're pretty much paying them for their, their time to record and, you know, they don't really give a lot of their input unless you kind of say, hey, you know, what? No, you should uh, have <laughs> brought your own producer or made arrangements f uh, for one because those people are acting in the capacity of engineers. They will uh, record what you tell them to record. Right, and Mark's not like that. He's more like a producer. And him and I hit it off real good before we, we started. We had a, our pre-production meeting. Yeah. And In the smaller studios, you almost have to do that. I've recorded band after band over the years. Uh, in this particular studio, and a lot of them have been really young, and uh, it's the first time they're in the studio. Mm -hmm. They're they're, yes. you know, they're really afraid, you know. Yes. And it's so, intimidating to be yeah, in there. Right. You, you, you calm them down and the whole bit, and uh, you know, order some pizza and and, and 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 start. Well, we didn't have any trouble eating. I mean, we we were in there about 18 hours the first day, and we we loaded up on the food. <laughs> How long? Uh, I know you didn't record uh, constantly, but uh, was it uh, a, f a few months before you uh, finished your project? It was about three months it took for the project. Okay. And we, we worked on it a lot. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Would you say you re recorded at least once a week? Um, maybe not once a week? No, maybe not once a week. It was usually, uh, we would wait until we had a lot of uh, things to accomplish and we knew we could get them all without, you know, changing the studio around three or four times to get what we wanted. And That's exactly the way they produce uh, movies. All the scenes that are shot in one particular place, they'll do the beginning of the movie, the mm -hmm. middle of the movie, and the end of the movie right there so they don't have to be moving the furniture. Yeah, so yeah it's very cost-effective yeah, that cost way. Cost-effective, saves a lot of money. Okay, the first single off of... Uh, the uh, album is uh, called Mountain. Uh, do you call the CD itself Mountain too? Yes, the title track is Mountain and the name of the CD is Mountain. Okay, the song Mountain. Is there any particular story that goes uh, with that song? There is an awesome testimony that goes with that song. Uh, Roger wrote that song and he wrote it uh, because his uh, stepson was a drug addict at the time and they got a phone call that he was gonna commit suicide and um, they just felt the need to start praying and praying and they called everyone they knew and asked them to pray and uh, God laid it in her heart and said, this is a mountain that, that's going to be removed and you need to speak my words, mountain be removed and I will remove this. And he did. And this, this young man has went on to go to college. He's a lawyer now. He's totally wow. rehabilitated and was that from any particular uh, scripture in the, the bible candy it was from matthew i think what is that matthew 17 i uh, believe uh, I, I i know the scripture but i don't know the uh, uh the, the verse what have you uh candy i know you've made a video to go along with your uh, song mountain is there any place online our viewers uh, can take a look at that yes you can go to uh, his royal blood band on youtube 
Okay, youtube.com slash His Royal Blood Band. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you for setting me straight. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the only reason I know is because I've messed up so many times, I finally figured it out, what's, what's going on there, you know. You have to go to youtube.com to get you into YouTube, and then you can do the slash and start finding... Uh, you know, uh, Lu Luigi's Pizza or whatever you want to see. Watch. I didn't even know you could do the slash. I always go to that little search thing up there and type in who well, I want to see. Okay, <laughs> that's a w way of. Uh, you taught me that. something tonight, Ron. <laughs> 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 Uh, that'll be a first one with John. <laughs> Candy, if folks would like to purchase a uh, copy of this, uh, you know, hard-made CD, it took a lot of time doing it, how might they do so? You can go to uh, email us. That's the best way. Uh, HisRoyalBlood837 at gmail.com. One more time for broadcasting's sake. HisRoyalBlood837. 837 at gmail.com. Okay. I almost hesitate to ask, but does it the 837 mean anything? It's Romans 837. Okay, thank you. Boy, I, there's one thing in this business. It says, if you do not know the answer to the question, do <laughs> not ask it. I think it's all over the sweat come down there, Ron. <laughs> uh, why, why, why do this? I know better. Uh, in case any of our viewers would like to contact you, I suppose they should just uh, do the, this, uh, the same uh, email address also, right? Yes, and um, if you have a testimony or you would like us to pray for you, we actually have a prayer warrior team who is um, several ladies, and it's very private. Only those people know your need, and it's, we take it very, very serious. It's a great privilege to take your needs before the Lord, and we do that with honor, and we would love to do that for you. So if you would email us your, your prayer requests or a testimony, we would love that. Okay, where do you usually uh, play? Uh, I'm sure churches and nursing homes, any other type of thing. I know you don't do the bars, do you? No, no. Although, you know, that's probably where we need to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a booking agency one time, and all these guys like Striper and everybody, they'd call up and say, we want to do the bars, we want to minister to them. And I came up with this saying, Candy, <laughs> when you go into the bar, make sure when you're preaching to the lion, he doesn't eat you. Yeah, it's kind of like throwing you into a snake pit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you get the idea. Well, Candy, I see our time is just about up for this edition of the Ron King Show. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks very much for coming into our studio today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. So on behalf of Candy Baker Maley of the Christian band His Royal Blood and myself, this is Ron King saying so long till we catch you next time on The Ron King Show.